So, morning everyone. Uh, I'm Nick Dugdale-Moore, UFI's Regional Manager in Europe, your moderator today. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Um, we only launched the session on Thursday and we had um, over 500 people uh, from more than 40 countries around the world register. Um, and I can see from the chat already people saying hello from all across Europe. So a very warm welcome to you all. Um, a very special thanks to our speakers today. Uh, Barbara Whitesacker from the uh, EEIA, the European Exhibition Industry Alliance, uh, Gerald Berza from Kölnmesse, Giovanni Mantovani from Verona Fieri, and Karina Montagut from Feria Valencia. I will hand over to you to them in a moment, but before, let me briefly introduce you to UFI Connects. We launched this series of online events for a simple reason. As the COVID-19 pandemic keeps exhibition industry professionals apart, our need to talk, to discuss, and to learn is bigger than ever. UFI Connects is a program of educational talks, panels, and sessions, and we will use this to provide content and dialogue while our regular events and educational programs cannot take place as usual. You can see upcoming as well as previous sessions at ufi.org slash ufi connects. And please let us know if you want to suggest a topic. Okay, some brief housekeeping notes. We've put you all on mute while our speakers are talking. We have scheduled time for discussion today as well. So I encourage you to ask questions. Please use the chat function. There's a button at the bottom of your screen to ask questions. We will pick them up and I will call on you when we get there. The team will activate your microphone and you will be seen on screen if you have your camera on. So the world is facing an unprecedented crisis. Over 3 billion people are currently under lockdown and with a few exceptions, there's uncertainty about when these conditions will be lifted and when we can get back to work again. The exhibitions and events industry was among the first and hardest hit by the COVID-19 outbreak. Research UFI published some weeks ago stated that an estimated 81.6 billion euros of total economic output will not be generated related to the exhibition industry by the end of Q2, with a further 134 billion of contracts not concluded at our events. With hardly any events foreseen in Q3, that number will rise dramatically and continue to do so until we can get our doors open again. But what will our world look like in the post-COVID era? How will events have to change to reflect this new normal? Will visitors and exhibitors feel confident to return to meeting together at live events? Will the so-called pivot to virtual change our events significantly, or will they remain closer to the pre-COVID format? We will shortly pass to our speakers and hear from them, and we look forward to hearing from you, your questions, comments, and suggestions. But before I do, I'd just like to ask a few questions for you, which will frame our discussion today. So firstly, if I can get this right, not that one. So you should be able to see on your screen now the question, once travel and other restrictions are lifted, how confident will you be to attend an international trade show or industry event, e.g. an UFI event? I'm happy to return to business as usual as soon as I'm permitted. I'm happy to attend, but would be mindful to take extra precautions, i.e. social distancing, wearing a face mask, etc. I'm concerned, but would take extra precautions. Or D, I would not feel comfortable attending international events until there is a widely available vaccine. So I'll just give you a couple more questions, a couple more seconds to, to vote on that. The answers are coming in. We have nearly 200 answers, last few seconds. Okay, with over 200 of you polled, um, you can see from that that the, almost the majority, almost half, said that you're happy to attend but would be mindful to take extra precautions. And a further 19% said they're happy to return nonetheless. So altogether, that's two thirds would be happy to return to events. 28%, um, almost a third, not comfortable, um, sorry, concerned but would take extra precautions and almost 10% would not feel comfortable at all. So I think that's a positive step. I mean, that's, that's widely subjective. Um, that's a very personal issue, whether you yourself or whether your staff will be prepared to attend international events. Okay, moving on to the second question. When do you think you will host your first event post COVID? Q3, 2020, Q4, 2020, Q1, 2020, 20, 2021, or later? 
So, so we can see there that just over half think Q4 2020 uh, and 17% even sooner in Q3. So again, I would suggest that's, well, I mean, that's almost a year without business, but that's fairly encouraging. Um, let's stop sharing results. Let's move on to question three. Did your company receive any economic support from your government? Yes, a grant, yes, a loan, or no? So no, over half of you have not received any economic support from your government. Now, Barbara will be talking about economic support. Uh, Ufi, we've done some uh, work around that. We republished some data, some uh, reports we have showing government support for the exhibition industry, government support for wider businesses. Uh, and we've republished all four of those reports on the Ufi website. And the last question, How long do you think it will take your business to recover entirely and to reach 2019 levels again? One year, two to three years, four years or longer. And there we have the answer. Most, you know, almost 70% thinking two to three years, uh, about almost a quarter saying a year. So um, that is comparable to the results of the 2008 crisis. Okay, well, thank you very much. I mean, that was, that was useful. As Stefan pointed out, the first question about um, would you feel comfortable? Obviously, these results are a bit biased. We are all international events professionals. Um, the wider people outside our industry who represent visitors and exhibitors might feel differently. Okay, without further ado, I'd like to uh, call upon the first of our speakers, Barbara, the Secretary General of the EEIA. Welcome, Barbara. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, from Europe and from further beyond, I see many people from Asia or other, even from Argentina, I've seen. So welcome, everyone. This is a little bit the EU and European, more geographical European view. Um, and of course, uh, as I'm the advocacy lobbyist um, of the European members of UFI and of EMICA, um, my focus will be on this relation between uh, politics and uh, our business uh, in this crisis and beyond. So I'd like um, to explain first, of course, the uh, EU had a very quick corona response. Uh, first, of course, focused on health, as you can remember, no masks, no uh, incubators and all these things, uh, very complex uh, issues, um, but very quickly they also focused on economy. Uh, it came immediately that also the commissioner for the single market and for the economy joined the um, crisis response team. This was also one of our requests in the very beginning, uh, not to focus only on health, but to in parallel already uh, check what it means to, to businesses, to the economy. Um, then, of course, it was about economic measures to mitigate and to relieve the crisis. Uh, there were, was a big response by the European Central Bank and also the European Investment Bank uh, and the Commission. And now we are a little bit in the third phase where um, everyone is focusing on exit strategies and the recovery. Um, there was, since the very beginning, a very good in the understanding and um, also high interest from the EU, uh, meaning the Commission, but also from the MEP side, uh, members of Parliament side, as uh, the first um, big event that was cancelled was, of course, a leading international event, uh, Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, had a high, very high um, uh, response from people uh, in the EU too, because very um, or numerous EU projects were represented there and also the Enterprise Europe Network uh, was about to implement a matchmaking session there, etc. So they were with their own projects concerned. This in the bad situation helped already raise our visibility. So what are we doing? We're in very close contact with the Commission and MEPs. We do provide input for example, about the damages um, together with UFI, what was uh, calculated, etc. And um, many, many position papers as the weeks go by. The last one last Friday, you've seen it perhaps, um, already going a little bit into the future with uh, concrete demands for, um, for exit and recovery. 
but uh, we really try to make our voice heard and propose uh, measures and they are of course economic to mitigate the crisis we've done that and we've also seen some schemes that were um, approved for example the denmark scheme under uh, specific or relaxed uh, state aid rules uh, just to help companies survive also asking more for grants and not only for loans which might never be able to be paid back and uh, in general to help to restart the engine and um, as Nick has already mentioned we have published also for everyone's uh, comparison and perhaps inspiration a list of measures in the European countries economic measures not many of them are directed specifically for our industries but many of the measures can benefit our industry too like many mother uh, many other industries so uh, this is, I think, a very good tool to compare what other countries are doing and also perhaps the size of the programs and to lobby locally for more. Because what the EU is doing, they give money also from all kinds of sources that are not used for this year and repurpose them for first aid and, and um, short-term economic help. Uh, but they are distributed on member states level. Therefore, what we can do is tell the EU give more, but then the distribution is on member states level. This is, means that uh, on, on your local level and national level, you need to echo what we are saying or even go beyond, tell us what, what else we can ask for. But uh, the money will be there. However, you need to still fight for it on your uh, um, national level. But then also we make our voice heard um, uh, in a very general way, because we have much to lose. We are the, uh, the Europe is the global leader in our industry with nearly half of the global market share. Our impacts um, have been, of course, promoted again. And um, with this useful video that you've seen in the beginning, also our brochure that we produced last year um, for the introduction to the uh, European Commission and the new uh, parliamentarians to just show our systemic relevance also for the industries that we serve. Um, and we really try to be practical because the Commission is very open at the moment to understand what do we need and uh, what can they do to help us. So uh, I think one very important element is the uh, definition of what are exhibitions and business events, uh, which are not mass events and not beer festivals or uh, football games, ma matches or whatever rock concerts where people are super close and they sweat, etc. Uh, this is one thing we try to lobby for that um, on all levels to make it very clear that um, we should be treated in a different way and not put under this event span forever because where people meet is a danger. Uh, it's not the case and this is why we're also um, prospectively working on concepts and measures for um, health and safety obviously it's on UFI level there is a task force and Nika is also working on that any other input by anyone is more than welcome because we've seen it in the last days also those branches and industries that go proactively and propose something to the governments are more likely to get something and the earlier we come the, the less demand is there and we have still have a chance to be heard. Um, always pointing on our impact of serving other industries. Um, so the collective intelligence of all our sector is really decisive here and I'm, this is why I'm happy to have um, all of you here and uh, receive as many feedbacks as possible later on. Then um, Another item, it might be touched later on too, is uh, of course the effect of the cancellations and the postponements. It will probably very have, have a very big effect on the landscape of our industry in Europe, but not only in Europe, but worldwide. And in order to be able to discuss at least and to defend our market to a certain extent, we are asking also the European Commission to, uh, for a temporary exception of the exemption of the competition rules uh just to avoid that if it takes longer uh, uh that we commit suicide also by competing too much against either each other this is of course on a level between two or three players who serve perhaps the same sector who are willing to perhaps for a certain period to join forces or something like that or to find a good calendar uh, however, for the moment, these, um, these talks are not permitted by competition law, but we are, um, we are there and try to get an exemption uh, just to be able at least to explore any possibility that helps us uh, to thrive in the future. 
um, in order to be to have more forces because we are in any case we are still a very small sector although we have uh, we generate a lot of impact we are trying to join forces also uh, with other associations you've seen our li uh, last um, ex uh, position paper was co-signed i will show you again by all the industries uh, European associations, which is uh, always good to have many logos to have more um, to, to be more impressive and we're trying to do the same thing with our um, vertical sectors and horizontal associations of our customers with uh, business Europe direct chambers SME United etc. So the ones who are our customers for the moment are not very loudly demanding us to be back and I think we have to tell them that uh, they need us and they want us to be operational as quickly as possible therefore this is what we're trying to do even um, taking also into account the trade promotion agencies whose interest is of course more national but they also have a european association so we are always trying to work on on both levels and also other sectors uh, related to ours like the travel and the tourism if there is no plane flying then we cannot have an international event so that's very clear airlines hotels and also on another level the UNWTO is uh, an organization that we speak to just uh, also to understand when travel will start again and as soon as we have little signs we can start planning again which is really good so uh, the question is also indeed in the beginning we thought b2b especially the international big ones are most important to open again because of course international visitors and exhibitors bring the most impact and um, the, the most effect here in europe on the other hand um, long-haul travel might not happen for a very long time this is why i think on the second strand we should go also not to exclude the consumer shows even though they're perhaps a little bit more difficult to handle on a technical level uh, to make them secure but they are sometimes smaller more regional more national and they can start first i think we should all go for whatever is possible and as quickly as possible um, so uh, the commission also asked for for many inputs which is really interesting um, so they have different scenarios and wanted to know for example uh, in percentage the the losses that we occur in our subsector uh, also investment gaps for the rest of the year or even in the two or three years to come or any other input and um, they are really working now on a trillion euro recovery program in addition or linked to this multi-annual framework uh, the finances of the EU for the next seven years. So um, again, this money will be earmarked to certain sectors and then distributed by the member states, but according to their priority and in the, in the way they want to do it. In the end, there will be national lobbying for the money. On the other hand, if we do our best, we can get money earmarked for our sector uh, to a large extent and uh, it should go hand in hand then with the national advocacy. I think we should also leverage, of course, uh, the um, second half of the year, Germany will be having the uh, EU Council presidency. Uh, Germany, as we all know, is a very strong <laughs> exhibition country and it could be good for the visibility of our sector. Um, so strategic wise, I think, um, we should also think about what do we want to change where do we do we want to go and this is input i really need from you because we also need to know um eu legislation will be coming that was foreseen and it goes into digitization much more and it goes into green deal uh, circular economy etc so this is where we can help our customer sector with the exhibitions to be adapting more quickly but our sector himself or our sector ourselves we need to also think about what can we change to to first of all to respond to legislation that will be coming but also to be more proactively and um, respond to also our customer needs i mean uh, we are all, and we are all ask all the time will exhibitions come build be there again or will we all go digital of course we don't all want to go digital but i think what we are doing here is not going away again afterwards it will be there perhaps to a lesser extent but we need to really think about what we want be clear and we can also get money for the change and i think this is important um, yes so not only strategically but then also just put a number of money on it and i think this is a big chance we've never had it although of course it's a crisis but to go for changes more quickly and more effectively and I would like to finish with this.
a positive outlook into the future, hopefully. Perfect. Thank you very much, Barbara. Um, I, there's some questions coming in on the chat already. If you'd like to ask any questions to Barbara, um, to, to Ufi, or to any of our speakers, please down the bottom in the middle, use the chat function and ask. And after our speakers, we'll have an open Q&A session and we'll, we'll come to you then. Um, and if you do ask a question, the Ufi team in the back office will, will get you ready and they'll let you know that we're going to come to you. Um, so now moving on to, to, to Germany and to uh, Gerald Burz, the CEO of Kohl Messer, who's also our European chapter chair. Uh, Gerald, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Nick. Good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening, everybody from all around the world, of course, uh, to Europe. Um, greetings from Cologne. Wonderful weather since weeks, so the whole situation seems even more surreal, I would say, uh, because outside it's like holiday, but uh, reality in business is a nightmare. So uh, it's a nice contrast uh, of, of our whole situation. And I think for weeks and for some of you already for months, the virus has taken over our personal and uh, of course also our professional lives. Although I uh, wish the circumstances were more positive than these, um, I think the virus links us across national borders and all trade fair organizers all over the world are struggling at the moment with the same problems and asking themselves the same questions. Even more, it's important that institutions uh, like Barbara is representing uh, are lobbying uh, at the right cities and that the right politicians for our common uh, profession and I think that is uh, very very important. Um, despite the situation we currently face I think the time and Barbara uh, gave this uh, more positive outlook at the end it's time to look to the future again. Uh, I think no one of us can uh, predict and knows how the pandemic will unfold for me, however, there is no alternative uh, to think in terms of trade fair scenarios again after the virus and maybe with the virus. Uh, just how these arrangements might look uh, will differ, of course, from one country to the next. And that is what makes it important for us to exchange our views and to monitor the situation very closely all over the world. For me, I'm in regular touch, uh, not only with Barbara or with Nick or with other UFI members, uh, but also with our subsidiaries uh, worldwide uh, in an effort to understand the current situation in the respective country. For example, uh, with regard to curfews and entry restrictions, because travel is essential for our business or how the virus currently affects the respective trade fair business and our events, both in Germany, but also, of course, worldwide. So for each region, I think a company who is working multinational uh, have to make a very individual determination of where we go from here and what is possible and what is not. At the moment, not many things are possible, as you know. The line of a approach for Cologne and Germany uh, is clear. There may be gradual relaxations for private and professional life. The German federal government has banned the holding of major events until the end of August 22. And uh, some of the counties uh, uh, are even going further uh, this morning or yesterday. Uh, Berlin as a, as a county and a state has published own rules. That means in Berlin, all events, more than 5,000 people are banned until October. So there is a government uh, a recommendation and then there is a, also a fragmentation within, within Germany and some uh, counties uh, are doing uh, different measures. I don't think that is helpful in the moment and we are strongly lobbying to have a, a, a German-wide uh, regulation. So in light of this, in light of uh, having banned all the events until uh, end of August 2020, we, for example, decided to take the step into a complete digitalization with Gamescom. 
Uh, still from September onwards, we definitely intend to hold our trade fairs and mainly our B2B trade fairs in the real world. So we have a, a, a slightly a, a challenge and that means in Germany to date, and I think this we can share with all other European countries, in Germany to date, public and political perception has not drawn a distinction between major events such as concerts or sporting events on the one hand, or festivals and trade fairs, B2B trade fairs on the other. That is why we are exerting a massive influence together with the German, but also European and global trade fair work. And that we are really trying empathically conveying to politicians, our industries and the media, how trade fairs work and what is the distinction between a B2B trade fair and a sporting or a soccer game. We really have to start from the ground to explain some of the decision makers uh, that it is not only uh, a person per square meter which is counting, that are many, many other criteria uh, we have to work on. So that also needs, we need to convince the economy uh, that our events are needed to get back on its feet and eventually to return to a certain normalcy. So in Cologne, uh, we have set up an internal task force to do this. And this task force is working and also finished the work to define very specific criteria and measures that will make it possible to organize trade fairs in Cologne from autumn onwards. We are, of course, happy to share this in respective working groups within UFI or other associations. So in addition to the question how things will continue from autumn onwards, we are, of course, all concerned about the financial situation of our companies. So as many of you uh, will probably agree that uh, the new KPI is cash flow in every company and uh, to guarantee the cash flow, we, we have to take all measures uh, uh, which, which uh, can help us uh, in this field, midterm and long-term. So for Cologne uh, itself, the coronavirus uh, will also have consequences for us. So we had a forecast revenue of more than 360 million euro this year. And uh, of course, due to the cancellation of trade fairs, uh, revenue and income in the triple digit millions of euro, uh, we have already uh, eroded away for the period between March and August. So you can imagine that we will conclude 2020 uh, now, we can already confirm already now with a very high loss. So fortunately, we have uh, managed to operate in the past years quite successfully, as many of you as well. But uh, I must say that this loss is so considerable that of course we have to adapt some investments in terms of infrastructure and others. And of course, in Cologne and all over the world, it is also crucial to examine what costs we can save or at least postpone incurring until further notice without sacrificing our position in the market. I think that's a very tough challenge we all facing. Uh, on the operational side, uh, most of our colleagues are currently working from home in a mobile capacity. And surely this is the form of teamwork that will accompany us for many times to come. We have also decided to make use of the state option of short-term work schemes uh, for the workforce here in Cologne. That is a typical or a German measure in, in times of crisis, which has been uh, approved and uh, worked quite well also during past crises, uh, like the financial crisis. So, I know that the situation is not easy for any of us anywhere in the world at the moment, but we also have uh, very positive signals, particularly in combination when we uh, announced our digital Gamescom. Uh, most of our companies say that they really don't look forward to a virtual Gamescom because you cannot experience uh, the Gamescom virtually but they're looking forward for a digital uh, Gamescom, which is quite different to a 
just a virtual Gamescom. I think that's very important. And uh, the response we got from all over the world is that they're really missing the physical, uh, the physical reunion. And I think that should encourage us uh, to, to see this as a, I would say, a, a, a bridge year, which also helps us to maybe reposition our, our events uh, very, very closely to work together with the industry and uh, to maybe also to, to strengthen our, our relation to industry and media. So for many years, we have been able to celebrate, I think, successes together. And now we have to band together to make the most of this uh, difficult situation. I'm looking forward to seeing some of you again, hopefully soon at one of the, our industry events or in Cologne or worldwide. Until then, stay healthy. Thank you. Thank you, Gerol. Thank you very much. Um, I, there's some questions coming in uh, in the chat. Thank you very much. Before we move on to our next speaker, I think it'd be useful now to let you know there have been a few comments about um, politicians not understanding the difference between exhibitions and B2B uh, trade events and other types of mass gatherings or large events such as pop concerts, um, festivals, sporting events, etc. This, this is crucial and um, this is what we are working on currently at UFI because you will have seen in the past days and weeks, um, very much in the last couple of weeks, the conversation has changed and everybody is working on reopening. Um, what does it look like? How can we get to open again? And this is a crucial question. Um, it's important to make the distinction between exhibitions and B2B trade events and other types of events for two reasons. Firstly, because a B2B trade event um, has a different characteristics. We, are, we can control almost every part of our, our visitors and exhibitors journeys. There have been recommendations about whether it's uh, access control, about the physical journey on site. We can build wider aisles. We can use technology to track people and to collect data um, without having contact etc etc and, and many people uh, many organizations many associations around the world uh, around the world have published these guidelines um, in the last days and weeks but the second important thing is that exhibitions are more than just a large event they are crucial uh, to get the economies our national economy get our businesses back on their feet um, therefore we argue that we should be prioritized over other types of last events. We were the first to be shut down. We cannot afford to be the last. So UFI is working on um, our, our new project, which is to collect and to look at all of these different guidelines that have been published. And most of them, quite frankly, 80 to 90% are the same. Um, Florent, you mentioned, are we supporting Go Live together in the US? Yes, we are. You will see Go Live, which was um, started in the US with a coalition of, of associations. We wholeheartedly support that. Um, along with everybody else's recommendations that they're publishing around the world. What we can add to that is a global perspective, a global, uh, some advocacy and lobbying messages. Uh, and by no means is there a one size fits all set of guidelines for people to adopt, but certainly we can get the message out there that can be delivered nationally, that exhibitions must be prioritized to open first and they can do so safely because we can operate within these guidelines uh, in conjunction or that follow WHO recommendations. So that's what we're working on. Um, I have a slide at the end about Global Exhibitions Day, which we will be announcing soon, um, which also deals with this topic, which is arguably the most topic that any of us will face uh, in recent years. Okay, so moving on to our next speaker, moving to Verona in Italy. Um, Giovanni, if you'd like to take it away. Good morning, everyone, or oh, good afternoon, good evening, <laughs> everyone uh, all over the world. Uh, I think it's very useful to organize uh, to this meeting because uh, it's the first opportunity to speak about uh, our business in the, this uh, very, very complex situation all over the world. And uh, I try to uh, inform you about our uh, position. Uh, Italy uh, it came from a very long period of a lockdown, as you know, 
uh, just yesterday it was uh, nine weeks uh, of, lock, of, of a complete lockdown and uh, just yesterday the government announced that from the uh, next 4th of May uh, we'll uh, start with the reopening of a part of the uh, industries and of some activities not at all the exhibition as you know as you can imagine uh, this is the uh, they say this is the second phases of the crisis after the after the uh, phase one and uh, we expect for uh, other steps uh, of uh, the ch of uh, changing uh, the regulation uh, the other steps we are expecting is the middle or of may when uh, the government uh, expect to reopen uh, uh, the, the store and the museum and uh, some other activities so, uh, like uh, sports activities uh, and not uh, uh, team sport but individual sports and at the beginning of june at the beginning of June, they will restart the restaurant, the beauty center, and so on. So the uh, the, the activities close with the, the single person with the the, 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 the the contact between the person, and they expect to reopen the the beach uh, in uh, in the middle of between uh, June and July. And uh, we expect, uh, uh, with the information uh, on the basis of the information we have, that uh, uh, the trade fair will restart uh, at the beginning of October. Uh, but here th there is a question. Uh, 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 Nick spoke very well about this question the same uh, say uh, do uh, does uh, uh, mr booze we have to define what uh, in the future uh, a trade fair will be really because uh, the question is not uh, to be confused uh, with the, the festival with the, the uh, great uh, musical events for example and we have to define that we are uh, an organization that organizes meeting for business so b2b uh, meetings b2b show b2b uh, appointment uh, on this part we are working very heavy uh, with the uh, three uh, uh, groups organized in our organization the first uh, groups is uh, working about uh, the venue uh, we think that uh, in this particular moment uh, to have uh, uh, a very very uh, large exhibition center a large venue a well organized venue is very very uh, important uh, and uh, the main question to approach uh, uh, are uh, in our opinion uh, the procedures to reverse and threat suspected cases of a uh, pandemic uh, the second uh, special sanitation measures extra cleaning disinfectant dispenser air disinfection uh, uv disinfection and so on uh, the third that also yesterday evening the prime minister uh, of italy uh, mr conte says uh, will accompany us for a long time uh, is the physical distancing measures uh, so we need in our venues uh, floor marking larger corridors uh, protective screens uh, floor and table divers face mask, uh, plexiglass visors, and so on. Uh, and mainly, this is the most important question I, I see, 
and also uh, the most uh, important from an economic point of view uh, because probably we need a, a, a really new uh, system of uh, access control procedures uh, queuing systems uh, forced facts people counting uh, time slot uh, pre-registration booking systems health authentication and uh, this is a very very uh, big part of uh, uh, what we are imagining and uh, uh, last but not more, more less important uh, information uh, website update uh, behaviors graphics uh, outline training for the staff uh, and so on we have to manage uh, probably in autumn, uh, probably at the beginning of the next year, the situation in which uh, the virus is uh, present, but not so pandemic. And uh, uh, our expert says that uh, uh, between the autumn, next autumn and next uh, spring, uh, we have uh, to work with the presence of the virus, the confusion between the uh, coronavirus uh, and uh, other virus uh, 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 normal in the autumn and uh, winter season. Uh, on the other side, we are moving towards a, a, a digital integration of the exhibition. Uh, I have, with a lot of attention, what uh, Bull says, and uh, uh, we have to integrate the online meeting uh, with the, the physical meeting because probably uh, our exhibition center will be able to host less people uh, for any exhibition. Where so we have to connect uh, other uh, buyers, other business people, and so on uh, with. Uh, on uh, uh, digital uh, support. Uh, from this point of view, the other question is uh, that probably uh, the situation will not change at the same time in the different uh, uh, countries, in the different continent. Um, maybe uh, Europe will uh, uh, go ahead with the, the same time and the similar regulation but nobody of us uh, probably will know what will happen in uh, other part of the world uh, what uh, will happen in south america what will happen in uh, uh, north america and uh, what kind of regulation will uh, they establish for the entering and the outgoing of uh, people from uh, one country from our one continent to the other so uh, we tried also in the, the last weeks uh, to organize uh, uh, some experiments uh, about our exhibition uh, connecting uh, uh, on a, a digital platform uh, opportunity uh, of business for a little group of uh, our exhibitors uh the very interesting uh things i see i could see in this uh, experiment is that uh, our clients are very very uh, in fact empathic with uh, our uh, organization they uh, are close to us and they really uh, consider the exhibition the b2b exhibition uh, like uh, an opportunity, like a very, very important uh, support uh, for them. So they are uh, discussing with us uh, how to uh, go out from uh, this uh, situation. Uh, so we have uh, to improve uh, the customer profiling and uh, push uh, with the artificial intelligence uh, this activity, uh, exchange uh, event apps to support uh, access control transfer to digital learning platform the educational activities uh, uh, related to the events um, and in about this point uh, 
we had in the last weeks uh, some experience and uh, we could experiment that uh, uh, hundred people uh, are uh, uh, are open to this uh, uh, opportunity and they uh, look uh, uh, positive to, to the opportunity to connect with the, with the exhibition center uh, to know what is happening how is changing the the business how is changing are changing the rules in the world about their business this is a focus very very interesting there are otherwise other challenge and opportunities um, new products and services to offer but uh, needed to identify a sustainable business model uh, keep a return of investment for exhibitors even with the less visitors new risk related to other pandemia and computer viruses uh, treat from a e-commerce platform and social networking platform to jump into physical event market and uh, uh, i what i want to spend uh, one minute about another question uh, that is a general question for the our uh, industry uh, i think uh, that uh, the the our company the main company or our in our business uh, are able to arrive to uh, the beginning of the next year with the, uh, their uh, capacity economic capacity but uh, 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 all our company we need the uh, support from uh, the government the, the national government uh, probably from uh, the european community to maintain uh, the uh, sustainability, the economic sustainability of uh, our industries for the future. And to do this uh, is very important. They understand very well how the, our industry is very important also for the uh, economic uh, recovery in the future, in the uh, next future. Thank you for the attention. Many thanks, Giovanni. Um, and just to comment, there's a few questions coming in uh, on the similar question about these the, the, these guidelines for, for reopening. Um, Pedro Braga in Lisbon, you, you, you mentioned it, Bala, you picked it up again, and then Pamela, you also asked. Um, so Kai's answer, but we are working on this. It's What we can't do is prescribe a checklist, nor would we want to, because then we, we would be held to it. What we can do is provide a framework, uh, and we are basing it on, I'm just going to put the link down below for everybody. Um, the, there's a document which is the, uh, it's not that one. Um, but anyway, it's the, it's the uh, World Health Organization guidelines, recommendations for key planning of a, of a large event in a pandemic situation. So th the approach, as you mentioned, Giovanni, is not the same in e each specific country. Um, it, it varies from country to country. Um, and so what we can do is provide a great a framework with the accompanying lobbying messages. We hope to have it finished by the end of this week. It's a holiday at the end of this week and the beginning of next week in Europe. So certainly in the coming days, we will publish it and there will be a global lobbying campaign to follow on. Okay, so moving over to uh, Gerald would like to ask a quest has a comment. Please go. Yes, um, uh, just a very short comment to, to this uh, topic because this will be, of course, one of the crucial uh, topics uh, beside of the travel restrictions we we all facing so I, I, I agree with Giovanni that we have to uh, work on, on of course this criteria catalog uh, but that will even differ from from venue to venue from city to city because uh, the requirements uh, of a b2b event or an exhibition can be can be very much influenced by the by the uh, level of technology each venue can provide to themselves or to guest organizers. For example, when we're talking uh, for our venue, uh, of course we have through our uh, through the investments all also like other venues into the digital signage and into uh, digital technology for for visitor guiding. We are 
able to prepare to the organizers a different service level probably than than others do. You know, we're talking about uh, managing visitor crowds through geofencing, beacon technology, heat maps, uh, all these things uh, where the digital signage can have a massive influence on it. So it's really different even from venue to venue. And when you're guest organizer, I think you need to, to address this also to your uh, respective venue, how they can support you in, in uh, different uh, uh, measures, because uh, the venues play a very crucial and vital role in this, in the next months. Gunnar, thank you. Um, Karina, so Karina from Feria Valencia. Hi, Karina. Pass Hi. Mm -hmm. Good morning and thank you for the invitation. Hope all of you and all your friends and family are safe. Uh, I don't think I have much time, so I won't speak really a load. I'll try and keep it small and short. <laughs> and just tell you a little bit about Spain and how about our venues are, are working and, and are doing now. Um, we're starting today our seventh week of, of lockdown. Um, it's really a long time. <laughs> So um, we've been all working from home. Uh, a lot of companies have been closed. And also a lot of them have had temporary layoffs uh, of staff until all this uh, alert state uh, is over. So economically, it's a difficult situation for a lot of families. But we're trying to, to see if this comes out. Yesterday, we started with the first of our breakout measures. Uh, this was the children could be could go out onto the street to have a walk around. They could go only with one parent, one kilometer away, one hour. So this was a, a big relief for families, and some of them also went out more time or with more parents, and was a bit more uh, of what they had to do. But I think everyone was really, really excited about this. Um, also, uh, we've been told that in one week uh, the, uh, we will be able to go outside to do uh, individual sports. Uh, so this is also a good um, a good uh, energy coming in for everyone that I think we all need it. Um, as Barbara, Gerald, and Giovanni uh, have said, I mean uh, we're all living an uncertain time. Uh, no one knows really what's going to happen and we're all making different stages about and different suppositions about everything so um, even when you speak with asian uh, venues uh, they don't even know uh, when they're going to actually start because they're more bothered than when they're going out on the streets if they're going out and how can it how are they going to move if you're speaking with a uh, i mean maybe in india they're like everyone's the same everyone's asking questions about what's going to happen i mean so Everyone's with the, with the same thing that what are we going to do? So uh, I think we're all of us now working together more and more with all the sector associations. I mean, we have UFI, we have Maker, we have all of them. I mean, we're, we're putting out a bit of information in it and hoping to get things working together. I mean, we're here working with the venues, other venues in Spain, trying to set like general and specific measures from when the reopening comes. When is it going to come? We don't know, but we're going to work for it. We're going to work to try and get everything moving as fast as it can. We don't know if we will have shows going on in September. I, we would love to. We're, we're trying to, 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 to do it. I think everyone is thinking the same thing. As soon as we can start with everything better, but we don't know. So we're working for it, but maybe it's not September, it's October, maybe it's not October, maybe it's November. But let's every one of us put, put all the information, all the knowledge we have to try and get this working and going. Um, also, uh, I think we're all uh, working in a COVID-free venue project, if we could call it like this. Uh, First of all, as Barbara said, making the difference between mass gatherings and fairs. And that's really important. I mean, the economic impact, it is very different. And as we've, they've said also in the chat, I mean, 
our politicians and everyone's politician doesn't don't really know the difference they'll get the same the things in the same box and we're all together i mean this doesn't work like this so we've got to we've got to make our lobby to make them know what's going on then second thing we're working on and i think everyone is working as well is trying to identify the risks and propose measures with our exhibitors suppliers visitors and attendees i mean it's just putting ourselves in the same place or in the place of our visitor would, would you go to another venue uh, uh, how would you go there uh, are you scared and going what do you need to go there so it's just making us those questions to see how um how we can help everyone is it would you getting risk or is it not a risk so let's try and, and get all this communication over to them as well and then after this i think is adapt all our venues to all the measures we are taking and we are doing it's like all the sanitary and hand sanitizer limits of attendees social distances everyone has to adapt to what as pedro was saying uh, let's get some common things together that would be easier for everyone but really now at this moment we don't have it so uh, where is your um everyone has ideas let's get all those ideas in common i mean let's pass them on to nick and say i think this would be good because this is the way that we're going to get moving and get something in common it's a moment to do this i mean if we don't do this today when are we going to get all together and move for the same thing so i think at the moment we can all collaborate and and do it all together uh, i'm sure everyone has uh, things going on already in their heads and in their venues that that can be really important for for other ones that that we're not uh, doing it something special from this pandemic is that it started in one place and it's going around to the other so what one's done already the other ones are really far away they're, they're not even thinking about that because they're in another stage so let's try and help us each other with that information with what we know no one knows when the when the airplanes are going to start flying when the travel restrictions are going to are going to get over but what we do know is that information is the way to get over this so uh, for us we, we're trying to help everything as we everything we're doing so let's try and um, help us with this uh, i think maybe this is a this is a um, the the phrase i want to leave here let's let's try and get over this all together with the information we have already and um, for sure that uh, what we do now here in spain or what uh, giovanni has done in italy is going to help people over in states so let's get one and one and let's get nick all the information to do with this i don't know if more or less this is the the general i idea for for what i what i wanted to to say i mean um also i think it's important to highlight that um what all the exhibition industry has been has been doing to support this i mean some of us have been uh, converted into hospitals into warehouses for sanitary markets into hosts for homeless and um, we've been using our kitchens as fa facilities to give food for for others um, this is very important we are acting in this uh, pandemic so let everyone know let everyone know and let the governments know as well and let's um let's let's get a let's get more stronger uh, face to everyone and i think that that's it for now what was that nick <laughs> perfect thank you karina and and look we haven't touched on it today that you know in times of crises Individually and collectively, our venues and our infrastructure is used with a relief effort, um, which should be noted. Um, there's a lot of questions. So, so comments from Simon Foster and Eric Pierre-Jean saying that we shouldn't wait for authorities. Supermarkets have given guidelines uh, which have been widely accepted. So this is absolutely, we agree that we need to be on the front foot and to not wait to be given guidelines. This opening up project, if you like, has already started. We've been in touch with um, uh, from not just from organizers and venues also suppliers from logistics companies from the stand builders um, to associations so we're talking to and consulting with the whole spectrum of our world 
um, to make sure we get this framework of guidelines um, with the accompanying lobbying messages, and that should be ready in the coming days. Um, and also, well, we, we will be, you'll be hearing about that in future. Um, I'm mindful of time, so I just want to have one final question, which leads into our final point uh, from Ian Taylor from the NEC in the UK. So Ian, can you please ask your question? Yeah, good morning all. I think it's really a point around the importance of collaboration and you just touched on it there, Nick. Um, it's not just venues, it's not just organisers, it's also how we can work with the contracting community, the exhibitor community and ultimately the visitor community uh, to ensure that we can persuade governments and all of those interested parties that we can run safe events that have got controlled measures within them. So I'm really interested in people's views uh, from all of the participants today as to how we can collaborate more effectively to do that. Okay, um, perfect. So, so um, well, as you know, Global Exhibitions Day takes place every, the first Wednesday in every June. Pascal, if we can have the slide. Um, and this will be focusing this year um, on the single topic of the fact that exhibitions are key to rebuilding economies. Um, if I can ask Caitlin, if you're there, Caitlin, to give us, um, who's been helping us on this, to give us some uh, explanation of what you'll be doing from your point of view and how other people can get involved. Of course, I'd love to. Thank you. Um, and thanks for everybody who put in questions about this. It's absolutely what we're focused on and what we're working on. Um, so as Nick said, in previous years, of course, Exhibitions Day has been a lot about celebrating the different things that are great about the industry, but this year we're really trying to keep that very single focus that's been such the topic of conversation here, that exhibitions are key to rebuilding economies. Um, whether that's all the different methods we've just talked about, whether it's combination events, it's different ways of travel, all the things we're thinking about, but we're trying to really focus it. Um, but we want this campaign to be very positive. Um, so I'm kind of putting it into a few different categories where I'm saying, let's focus on the good times. Uh, so let's share memorable things that have happened at your events. So maybe there's been cool product launches, politicians or business leaders have given speeches, you've seen them opening events, uh, movements have started, deals are announced, um, all these things that, that we talk about from an event level about how our shows are really um, building the business world. So focusing on the good times, I also think we need to focus on the future, uh, share how your event will be reconnecting and rebuilding business, whether that's locally, whether that's by sector, whether that's innovation, whether that's international, um, however it's done and whatever's appropriate for your marketplace. Um, and then I think, you know, we talk about this all the time for our industry, it's about people. So uh, we say that there's 3.2 million jobs uh, as part of the exhibition industry. So that's 3.2 million lives, 3.2 million families, 3.2 million people. Um, so share pictures of your teams, your customers, your kids, your dog, yourself, I don't care, uh, with the GED logo. Do the follow me videos. Um, we've seen people doing these stand up videos to show your strength. Anything we can do that is just showing that the exhibition industry is connecting the world. We're putting businesses together, we're making things happen. Um, we are the marketplaces. So if you have another idea, you've got something else you want to run with, that's great. Um, but let's just, let's really use this as, as a time where we can celebrate. Perfect. Thank you, Caitlin. Okay, so I'm just going to wrap up now. I'm mindful that we've run slightly over and many of you will have another Zoom call to go to because we've all got endless Zoom calls now. So there are two main issues that have come out of this. Obviously, the reopening um, and, and the guidelines and the framework and how that can happen. And as I say, in the coming days, UFI will be releasing uh, a position paper, these such guide, a framework of guidelines and accompanying lobbying messages. And further than that, we will, of course, it makes sense that we will host an UFI Connects in the coming weeks on that topic. So I'm posting a link to the UFI Connects uh, down below. Please make sure you keep uh, looking there. And the second one, which we didn't even have time for today, was what will our events look like? Um, we've seen down below virtual, digital, and smart events, um, you know, hybrid events. What will the actual nature of the events look like? That's another question, uh, another topic for another day, perhaps. Um, so in conclusion, I would like to thank you all again for joining us. 
Uh, it's lovely to see you all. I really look forward to the time when we can see each other again at Anufi or any other industry event around the world. Um, I would like to thank our speakers, uh, Gerald from Cologne, Barbara from Brussels, Karina from Valencia and Giovanni in Verona. Uh, I would like to thank, if we can have the slide, Pascal, our diamond sponsors, which is the TSEB, the Thailand Convention Exhibition Bureau, Qatar National Tourism Council, Shenzhen World, and Freeman. Uh, and with that, I will bid you all a good day, good morning, good night. <laughs>